Joining us now, he is the editor-in-chief, the founder, investigative reporter, justthenews.com, uh, as we check in with John Solomon tonight. John, you have, more than any reporter in this country, been following this story and have broken pretty much by yourself every big aspect of this story. I want to go through this slowly, because I think there's sure. so many parts of this that people don't know about and that people have missed. Let's first go to the tax mm -hmm. charges. Now, wasn't it David Weiss that was contradicted by the whistleblowers? Didn't David Weiss originally plan not to bring any charges, and only as a result of the whistleblower testimony did he then bring it to another level, and that became the sweetheart deal that blew apart in open court because of a Delaware judge? Yeah, listen, first off, this uh, indictment tonight affirms every fact that the whistleblowers, Gary Shapley and Joe Ziegler, gave. They were, they've been tormented by some in the media and certainly by Hunter Biden's defenders. Their truthfulness is 100 percent confirmed in this indictment tonight. And they changed the course of history. Uh, David Weiss's team was content to give Hunter Biden a small... Uh, a small uh, uh, misdemeanor plea deal for Hunter Biden. Now he's facing three felonies, nine charges, 17 years in prison. They changed the course of history. Also tonight, Joe Biden has a very ba bad mark on his record now. Just think about this. This indictment portrays Hunter Biden as a quintessential tax cheat, a guy who'd rather spend money on sex clubs than pay his taxes, a guy who made millions in foreign money but wouldn't pay his taxes. Even when he filed his own taxes from time to time, he would cheat even when he filed his taxes, uh, the indictment alleges. There's a very important fact here. Back in 2019, I reported, and I was ridiculed for reporting, that Ukrainian prosecutors wanted to tell the United States government that Hunter Biden did not pay taxes on some of his Burisma income. Tonight, David Weiss's indictment through the grand jury, affirmed by the grand jury, confirms Hunter Biden did not pay taxes on the money he earned from Burisma Holdings in 2014, just like the Ukrainian authorities tried to tell the United States government in 2019, but they were turned away. Uh, this is a devastating indictment for a president. His own son is portrayed as a tax cheat. This is a president that time and again has told us he wants to crack down on tax cheats. He wants to uh, hire 89,000 more uh, IRS agents. In this case here, his own son is the poster child for what a tax cheat looks like, at least in this indictment. You know, John, let me ask you this. I want to go back, because the years, the Burisma years, and, and this is where, yeah. almost from the very beginning, uh, this tipped everybody off because it was so unusual. So let me just focus in on that one deal in particular. Am I wrong or, or right on the issue? In October of 2015, uh, didn't it become official Obama administration policy uh, to give a billion dollars in loan guarantees to Ukraine? And that was after an interagency investigation, and they decided enough progress on the issue of corruption in Ukraine warranted the billion in loan guarantees. That happened in October of 2015. Is that correct? You were That's right. That? There were a series of recommendations. September and October 15, on two consecutive months, the Treasury Department, Justice Department, State Department agreed together that Ukraine and its prosecutor general's office had made enough progress on uh, corruption reforms. It deserved a billion dollars in new loan guarantees. And by the way, Europe also concurred with that opinion. Let me ask you this, John, because it, then in December of 2015, this is the same year we're talking about, uh, Hunter is with Burisma executives. This is at the time, of, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is at the time they needed D.C. help, or maybe they needed the Biden yes. brand, if you wanted to use Devin Archer's analogy. And at that right. time, they were in Dubai. Hunter was in Dubai, and Burisma executives were in Dubai. And they had a phone call with Joe Biden. Uh, five days later, I believe Joe Biden went to Ukraine. That's when Joe Biden was bragging about the issue uh, that, in fact, he said, fire the prosecutor, you got six hours, uh, or you're not getting the money. Okay? He fires the prosecutor. As a result of that firing, Ukraine got the loan guarantee, which was already official Obama administration policy. Uh, and Hunter Biden, who admits he had no experience on Good Morning America in, in oil, gas, energy, or coal, uh, he continued to get paid millions of dollars for a job he clearly was not qualified for at a time where they're admitting that he was addicted to drugs and alcohol. Is that the proper timeline on that? That is exactly the timeline. In October, uh, Burisma started to get worried that the uh, 
Ukrainian prosecutors are ramping up their investigation. Hunter Biden starts talking to people around Joe Biden. One of Joe Biden's advisors talks to Joe Biden about it. The career people are recommending give Ukraine the money. They've done enough. Joe Biden, according to The Washington Post, now The Washington Post has changed its story. They now say that Joe Biden called an audible. You know what an audible is, a change in play at a football game? He called an audible and decided he was going to withhold the billion dollars and force the firing of the very prosecutor that was making Burisma panic. Hunter Biden's company was panicked, and they fire Victor Shokin. Uh, that is exactly what I reported in 2019, and today the evidence validates that uh, timeline. Let me go back. So then... How is it that, that uh, David Weiss investigating this, how did he let the statute of limitations pass on the issue of taxes involving the Burisma years? Because we're talking about millions of dollars there. W was that not the timeline? Were those years, did, that, did the statute of limitations pass there? Because that would have been highly unusual, because they could have gone to Hunter Biden's attorneys at the time and said, we're extending this or we're going to charge you. Wouldn't that be the normal practice? Yes, and normally they do what's called a tolling agreement, which extends the statute. You keep negotiating. Maybe you get a deal, but you preserve the government's ability to bring the charges. That tolling agreement, according to the whistleblowers, was allowed to expire in the fall of 2022, meaning the $400,000 in income that Hunter Biden, say David Weiss confirms this today, confirms the whistleblowers, $400,000 in income that Hunter Biden got from Burisma in 2014 could no longer be charged as a felony tax evasion case. Today, they mention it in the narrative, but they can't can't charge him with it because of the fact that they allowed the statute of limitations to go. And I think all of this would have been swept under the rug based on all the reporting I've done with FBI and IRS and other officials. This would have all been swept under the rug if Gary Shapley and Joseph Ziegler didn't come forward and blow the whistle to Congress. All right. Let me ask you this next question here. Joe Biden has said over and over again, he said it as a candidate. He said it as a president. He said it this week that he never once talked to his brother. Uh, or his son, or anybody for that matter, about their foreign business dealings. Now, we know that's not true, John Solomon. We know because Devin Archer told us yes. it's not true. And he himself, as a partner, knew of at least 20 occasions when Joe got on the phone with Hunter, their foreign business partners. And then, of course, we have uh, photo evidence of Joe Biden meeting with Elena Baterina. That's the Russian yes. oligarch, former first lady of Moscow, three and a half million dollar right. deal that they did with her, later leading to her investing, I believe, over a hundred million dollars in a real estate venture with them. Uh, but Joe Biden met with her at the Cafe Milano, didn't he? And he met with other foreign business partners at the Cafe Milano, didn't he? He did. And he met with one in the uh, Naval Observatory, the official vice president residence, when he was vice president, a guy connected to Kazakhstan. Uh, Joe Biden is simply not telling the truth when he said, those are lies. The only lies are his response to the, the, the evidence is overwhelming that he did meet, that he did get some money from his Senate. Remember, he lied and said, my family never got money from China. Today, David Weiss documents millions of dollars coming from China to his family. And tomorrow morning, we're going to provide some new evidence showing that, that Joe Biden is right in the middle of this scheme. With the help of Senator Ron Johnson, we're going to be able to reveal tomorrow there are six um, suspicious activity reports that came in from banks that were flagging two possible criminal activities, human trafficking and money laundering, that lists Joe Biden's Delaware residence as the source and origin or origination of the financial transactions that result in their concern. Joe Biden's house was sort of a crime scene for these banks reporting possible money laundering and human trafficking. His home, the home that he allowed his son to stay in for some time, it's listed six in six banks. $12 million of transactions in these six suspicious activity reports. It's the first time we knew that Joe Biden's house is in the middle of what uh, banks thought were money laundering and human trafficking schemes. That's going to come out tomorrow morning. Well, unbelievable. And your reporting has been dead on accurate. I will tell you, there also is this issue of David Weiss contradicting himself in separate letters, to, I believe, to one senator, one congressman, uh, and also the comments by Merrick Garland. Didn't Merrick Garland testify before Congress that David Weiss had the authority to charge in other jurisdictions? That was what David Weiss was telling the whistleblowers that he did not have. He did not have the authority yes. to charge in other jurisdictions, but he said something else to, to one branch of Congress and, and something else to a different branch, correct? Well, the, the House and the Senate, not, a, you know, different There's, houses. 
There's a lot to sort out here, but other witnesses have affirmed the whistleblower story and uh, rebuked both the accounts of Merrick Garland and David Weiss. David Weiss, I think, now has given a more complete account when he finally sat down with Jim Jordan, and he acknowledged, listen, I got turned down by the Biden appointees in Washington and California. I then let the statute of limitations go. I couldn't even do things without getting the approval of the tax division that was run by Joe Biden's appointees. So Weiss has gotten the story right now. His story matches the whistleblowers. It matches the IRS and FBI supervisors and others that Jim Jordan and James Comer have interviewed. But early on, there was a lot of fast and loose. The only people that turned out to be consistently accurate, the IRS whistleblowers. And by the way, you have been following the story of Kevin Morris, who apparently made a loan of $4.9 million. But as part of that, didn't you discover that one of the reasons he thought it was important to help Hunter out financially uh, was because the issue of of taxes would be front and center in the 2020 presidential race? Yes, he actually writes an email saying that there's going to be political and personal peril for Hunter Biden if he doesn't start paying his taxes. This occurs right in 2020, right after he meets Hunter Biden at a Joe Biden fundraiser. Those emails came out yesterday. Kevin Morris is mentioned as an unnamed person here. The uh, David Weiss confirms that uh, Kevin Morris was starting to pay. We, it's an unnamed person, but we know him to be Kevin Morris. Started to pay Hunter Biden's bills, including his rent and his tax bills, starting in the 2020 time frame. So that story has now been affirmed, too. There's a lot to dig in. In any other presidency, if a donor came in and started giving millions of dollars to the president's son or children or wife or brother, it would be a big scandal. Most of the media have tried to ignore this over the last few weeks, but David Weiss puts it front and center tonight in this indictment. Is Joe Biden really the tip of the spear here? In other words, we wouldn't be talking about any of this, would we, if Joe Biden wasn't the brand, if Joe Biden didn't lie to the American people repeatedly? Why lie if you're not involved, right? Why lie if you did nothing wrong? But Joe Biden lied to the country repeatedly, is lying again even this week on this very issue. Is it true that, that at the center of all of this is the president of the United States? It involves, let's see, 150 some odd uh, suspicious activity reports, uh, all of these shell corporations, all of these Biden family members, including grandchildren that are being paid, millions of dollars from some of our top geopolitical foes uh, being paid into this family, no evidence of any services that we can find rendered in exchange for that money. Is that where we are now tonight, John? Last question. We are. And listen, uh, 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 Hunter Biden himself admitted this in an interview two years ago. A lot of things came his way solely because of his last name. Yes, that's why he got hired. Yes, that's why millions came into the family. And they lied about it in 2019 and 20. Certainly Joe Biden did. And today the American public have a much clearer example of a grift scheme, a scheme that the Bidens ran that involved tax evasion now and also money laundering concerns at the banks. And Joe Biden's home is in the middle of it. That's going to be the big thing tomorrow. Joe Biden aided and abated this uh, of, uh, scheme for a long time. His family got rich off it. Now the last remaining question for James Comer and Jim Jordan, how much did Joe Biden personally benefit from it? That I think the impeachment inquiry will ultimately be able to answer. Yeah. I wonder now if he will use this as an excuse uh, not to appear before James Comer's committee. Uh, we'll watch that in the days to come as well. John Solomon, thank you.